I love sailing in remote parts of the world. I've been trying to figure out why that is. Is it the rugged natural beauty? Is it the authentic people that we meet? Good morning. <laughs> or is it the challenge of dealing with boat problems in the middle of nowhere? And honestly, I think it's all of the above. We've been in Greece for two months now, exploring the beautiful but extremely crowded Ionian Islands. And we are finally saying goodbye to the hordes of other boaters and have set our course for the Southern Peloponnese. This off the beaten path part of Greece is both epic and isolated with very few towns and even fewer tourists. So cool to step off the dinghy uh -huh. into this. And we cannot wait to dive head first into the most wild part of this ancient country. This is very straight up Indiana Jones right here. Yeah. This has been so so relaxing. I feel free again. I know. Woo! <laughs> Well, the wind was great. I was so pumped for like 10 minutes and then the wind totally died. <laughs> this our boat speed is right now. What is it? 0.8. Wow, that's Not great. Moving. Less than a knot. That's good. Oh my God. I think the wind's coming from like in front of us now. I guess we'll just motor until we find wind. Nothing like setting up the most complicated sail setup on the boat for 10 minutes. The area that we'll be exploring for the next couple of weeks is the Southern Peloponnese, which is made up of three large peninsulas. Our current destination is Navarino Bay, near the southern tip of the Messenian Peninsula. But we've decided to break up this trip into two day sails. So tonight, we'll anchor off the town of Katakolo. But for now, we're saying goodbye to the Ionian Islands and saying hello to the rugged landscapes of the Peloponnese. Wow, that looks very good, thank you. All right, so the wind is just about perfect right now. The wind is like 10, 11 knots, just on our starboard quarter. So we're just quietly gliding through the water, making good time. And it feels good to have the boat moving and have it be quiet for the first time in a long time. I figured now would be a good time to discuss something that's a little bit personal to me. And that is the American flag that we're now flying off the stern of the boat. We've never flown an ensign, right? Like a flag that shows where the boat is from. But here in the Mediterranean and particularly here in the Ionian Islands, it's a very popular thing. I'd say the majority of boats have a flag off the stern kind of showing where the boat comes from. I just think it's super cool. It's neat to, at a glance, know where people are from and you know a little bit about their story, right? But the other reason that I wanted to do this is ever since I started traveling, I remember a lot of people telling me that I would not want to make it known that I was American. There's just a lot of anti-American sentiment in the world. I didn't like this idea of being ashamed of where I was from and like trying to hide it. I, I never have. There's a lot that I love about where I come from. I think we're like a very hard working people and that generally speaking, there's a huge emphasis on doing what you do well and striving towards quality that I think is admirable a lot of times in the United States. But there's a lot of things that you can criticize and there's a lot of things that make the United States not perfect. And I feel like that's how just about anywhere is. Like every place has things that are good about it and things that are bad about it. Having that flag up makes me feel the need to behave in a way, to be the kind of person that would represent the United States well, that would maybe one interaction at a time kind of change a lot of people's perception of the United States. So anyway, that's enough of that. So we are probably about five hours away from our destination and I am feeling amazing. I have missed sailing so much, and I'm excited to get to do a lot more sailing heading around the Peloponnese. Hey baby, what you doing down there? You eating your carrot? It's fun as she gets older to find new places for her to hang out, you know? Like, I never thought I'd just put her down in the 
cockpit floor, but it works really well. I have no idea how one carrot can get so messy. And she still has it around. <laughs> Time to bring in the yeah. trash Crew. disposal. Oso. Get in there, Oso. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the best part about having a dog. The conditions today have been so perfect. The wind has been directly behind us all day. We've been sailing now for probably six, seven hours. The boat is just blasting along, steering itself. All the systems are in harmony. Everything's working. I just feel so rejuvenated today. We were probably in the Ionian Islands proper for a month or three weeks, something like that. And I'm not counting where we were at first, Preveza, and Zakintos and even Argostoli. That wasn't super crowded, super busy, but the last couple weeks have been very stressful for me. And this has been so relaxing. I guess I just love the fact that if we don't like something about a place, we can just move, we can go somewhere else, you know? This lifestyle has a lot of ups and downs, there's a lot of pros and cons, and one of the best things is just that pure mobility. What's up, Bozo? Good boy. Nice spot, huh? Yeah, huge. <laughs> yeah. I feel free again. I know. Woo! <laughs> no one can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that day just blew by. Issa mm. and I were just hanging out in our zone, having a good time. Yeah. You were up here in your element, just like happy as could be, <laughs> sailing away. <laughs> I can definitely feel your calm spreading all over the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just love being at anchor, you know? Isabella, you wanna see the jellyfish? That's a big sucker, you see it? because she just started throwing up a lot. Yeah. And just got throw up everywhere. Are you a little seasick baby? What's weird is she cries all the time. Like yeah. She cries if she's tired, she cries if she's hungry, she cries if she's bored. She does not cry at all I know. when she's seasick. I know. I think the reason is, is because we're going dead downwind and there's a swell hitting our side and so we're just rolling a lot. Not quite as pleasant as yesterday. You okay, baby? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you still in a good mood? That's good. Man, it is just kind of a sloppy mess out here. The wind is dying down a lot, but there's still a lot of chop and swell. But we are approaching the entrance into our anchorage for the evening and for a couple days, I think. It is near the town of Pylos. It's a giant bay. Actually, Pylos was a really important ancient Greek city. It was one of the city-states that was in the stories The Iliad and The Odyssey, written by Homer. And you can easily see why when you look at a map, this giant bay has amazing protection for boats. So people have been using this bay as a harbor for boats for thousands of years. Bud, you gotta come check this out. Look at that arch over there. Whoa. Isn't that nuts? I was like, am I just seeing things? Wow. <laughs> part of me was wondering if this peninsula would be as stunningly beautiful as parts of the Ionian, because you don't read about this kind of stuff. Right. But it's gorgeous. Yeah, this place is awesome. Man, this protected bay is massive. It's huge. It feels so good 
to be in protected water because we've been just rolling and kind of getting banged around all day. And so it feels so nice to come around that corner and then just instantly totally smooth, totally calm. Feels really good. Well, what a nice place. Yeah. It's just beautiful. There's this huge beach right next to us. Big cliffs, cool old castles and walls to explore. And I'm loving how spread out the anchorage is. I'm Peloponnesos all the way. Pelo Peloponnesos all the way. <laughs> we love Peloponnesos. <laughs> Hello, baby. Are you having fun with dad on the bow? Yeah. You made a delicious dinner. Oh. Suvaki, tzatziki, grilled vegetables, and you left on the stick. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Greek style. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's getting splashes and she's like not happy about it. <laughs> Whoa, oh God, it's on your shoe, buddy. dude, whatever this thing is, it is on me. Oh. oh, he's gone. Today, we're on a mission to find the old Navarino Fortress. Originally built by the Mycenaeans over 3,000 years ago, the fortress has seen a lot of action, but is probably most famous for its role in the Battle of Navarino, which took place in 1827 and was a pivotal event during the Greek War of Independence. At that time, Greece had been ruled by the Ottoman Empire for hundreds of years, and Greek nationalists were fighting a war for independence. Around this time, a coalition of British, French, and Russian forces had recently joined the side of the Greek resistance fighters, and it was literally inside of this very bay that the battle between the Ottoman and coalition fleets occurred. Over 100 ships and 3,000 cannons turned the sky black with smoke as they fought in close quarters. Ships sank by the dozens as their surviving crews swam for shore. By the time the coalition forces won the battle, more than 3,000 men had lost their lives in this bay, with 55 Ottoman ships sunk to the bottom, many of them still there to this day. The battle marked a turning point in the struggle for Greek independence and remains an important historical event. Whoa, this is nuts. This is very straight up Indiana Jones right here. Yeah, a lot of the times I think I'm just a very egocentric human. And part of me thinks like, oh, this fort is here for my enjoyment. But it's really hard for me to actually go back in time and realize that people were stationed here and living here, manning this gate and opening and closing it. And like, this isn't here for me. <laughs> I think that's my favorite thing about coming to a place like this for me is there has been a fortress here for thousands of years. This goes through. Whoa, this is cool. Are we on top of the arch right now? Oh my gosh. We are. Yeah, bud, you are right now, right on top of the arch. Oh, I thought you were gonna tell me I'm falling through. I'm like, no, what? you're not falling through, but you are like right on top of the gate. Kind of sketchy, you might not wanna stand there. Oh, I wanna like put a bed here, put up a umbrella, just have some lemonade and watch my 360 view. <laughs> so nice. It's hard to believe that one week ago, I was struggling with intense anxiety as we sailed the congested waters of the Ionian Islands. And as I walked around this ancient fortress, which we had all to ourselves, and looked down at the nearly empty anchorage, I thought about how many opportunities sailing affords me to learn more about who I am and what truly matters to me. Oh my God, it is so hot. I feel like I'm walking in the desert right now, buddy. It is very Ooh, I see ocean. Oso's already in it. <laughs> Let's get in that water. Yeah. Okay, baby. This 
It's gonna feel very good. Are you hot like mom? Ooh. Oh, is it cold? Feels good though, huh? Yeah, boy, come on. <laughs> oh. Hey, come here. Come here, you little floater. We have been here in Navarino Bay for a couple of days now, really enjoying ourselves. And we need to head even further outside of civilization. We need to get all the way to the other side of the Peloponnese in order to fly back to the United States because we actually have some doctor's appointments. We're gonna see some specialists for Isabella back in the States at Boston Children's Hospital. So we've gotta get a move on. And I'm really excited because the Southern part of the Peloponnese is supposed to be super rugged, super raw, like just wilderness very far away from civilization. It's gonna be awesome. But before we head out into the wild blue yonder, we actually have a pretty serious engine issue that we need to deal with. I recently discovered that a hose on the engine's raw water system is leaking. And although it's not a huge problem at the moment, if we don't do something about it now, the hose could blow wide open and we'd be dead in the water. So we're heading to the nearby town of Pilos to see if we can find a new hose. Okay, ready, baby? The town square is right yeah. at the harbor. So like you can cute. leave your dinghy at the town square. Man, how cool is this? Oh wow, it even has a thing to tie up to. Yeah, That's no cool. kidding. Coming up. Oh my God, okay. Ah. Nice. Man, oh, oh, this feels great. Feels wonderful. Yeah, so cool to step off the dinghy uh -huh. into this, yeah. like nice cafes under giant trees. Yeah, these buildings are cool, man. I mean, like just the aesthetic of the whole town with the blue uh -huh. and the light colors. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, good. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm Jordan. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little baby. This is Isabel. Where are you from? We're from the United States. United States, America, America. Yeah. Where, where? Florida. Yeah. Tampa, Tampa Florida. And oh, we Tampa. Worked before 35, 40 years. Oh, yeah. Uh, New York. Wow. Uh, Boston, oh, wow. Uh, Baltimore, Savannah, Georgia, for the boat, for the boat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. What kind of boat did you work on? Uh, uh, Condenis boat. Condenis oh, yeah. Cargo boat. Oh, thank you very so much. Much. That's so kind of you. How long have you had this store? Uh, 29 years. Wow, that's so amazing. 20 years ago and now, is it very different? No, no, no different, yeah. no different. You born after oh, look special, at that. Spe wow, special thank you. Oli, oli. Oh, oh right. my gosh, product. Thank you. That's so nice. Love oil. Thank you. Say, say thank you, Isabella. Eparisto. Eparisto. One of the hoses is leaking, so I'm looking to replace it. Yeah, that's it. elastico, got diesel, got the diesel, 25 millimeter. Sti mecanici si yamar, si yamar, yeah. My friend, Mr. You explain, explain. Hmm. Yes. Hello. Um, yes, I'm looking for a 25 millimeter uh, hot water hose uh, for a Yanmar engine. Um, it's the kind not with the steel reinforcement, but with the synthetic uh, fabric reinforcement. I'm actually not sure the, the, the name of it. Yes, 25 millimeter, correct. I see, uh, no, uh, water, hot water. Okay, gotcha, in, in Kalamata. Sh sure, thank you. Hello, Mikhaji. Okay, well, right. that was pretty good. Yeah, that was so nice, what a pleasant experience. The guy said that he'll call us in the morning, that the store that should have it is closed right now, but he thinks there's a really good chance that they'll have it. And then I don't know if it's gonna get here or, or if we're gonna have to go to Kalamata. Right. Tentatively a success, 
but definitely a success in just meeting that dude. Yeah. I, I mean, holy moly, I've never walked in to a marine supply store and had <laughs> such a warm welcome. I know. Like free juice. And olive you know, oil. A free I, olive oil. Yeah, this way it looks nice. Yeah, sure. Oh, this. wow. Yeah, yeah, look at this. So cute. Yeah, I'm definitely into this town. <laughs> holy moly, look yeah. at that. That's such a beautiful building. It is. Yes, sis. Are you open? Oh, great. Say hello. Say hello. Okay, so we got vegetables. We got some kind of a beef with rice, and we got chicken soup. Oh, man. Mm. That's so good. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. So how do you think mm. Greek food in general holds up to, you know, your favorite foods that we've had traveling? I think it's up there. I think Mexico had amazing food, like the Yucatan. Like the stews there were so rich. That pork that they would cook under the ground with like red sauce. The Mayan food. Yeah, the Mayan food is so good. That and Greek food are my favorite. I think Greece and Mexico are similar in a lot of ways. Mm. It makes me think of Mexico because it's like a wealthier country than the countries to the south of it, yet it's much cheaper than mm. in the States. Mm. That's kind of how Greece is. Like Greece is much wealthier than like the North African countries, yeah. but yet it's like the cheapest of the European mm. countries, you know? Well, and this meal is actually kind of expensive, but I mean, yeah, there's a lot of food and it's gonna be like 33 euros. <laughs> I hear you, baby. I'm right there with you. All right, we went to the grocery store to pick up a few things and it's air conditioned. Oh my God, it's so good, isn't it, baby? This is the first air conditioning we've experienced since leaving Malta, so like all summer. And Isabella was kind of like cranky and moving. I walked in, she was like, <laughs> she was just like, we need to not leave this place. It feels so good, baby. We don't even need anything else. We're just walking around looking at stuff. I once heard that happiness equals reality minus expectation. And to me, that describes the experience of discovery that we're having right now. Simply going somewhere with zero expectations and exploring. And sometimes that roll of the dice pays off in a big way. So I got a call from our buddy at the friendliest marine supply store that I've ever been to. Man, this project seems so simple on the surface. Kind of nuts how challenging it's becoming. We are really running out of time to be here in the Peloponnese. We've got to start making our way around so that we can make our travel dates back to the States. Okay, well, departure has been delayed. Mm -hmm. 